Jesus Tales is my third novel, which I later made the second part of Sand Mountain out of. I had been very ill. I had um, uh, left lober pneumonia. I was in the hospital for 18 days. When I got out, I was very weak. And I couldn't do anything. But I could get on the bus and go down to the New York Public Library and have them bring up things. And for some reason, I started having them bring up books of folklore, starting back in the 1850s when folklore first began to be collected. Uh, and I started looking for uh, stories uh, about folk tales about Jesus because in a book that I found on the back porch at Yaddo, one of the many things Yaddo gave me, was a book uh, um, uh, of, of, of uh, folk tales that an Italian scholar had put together. And among these folk tales, there were some outlandishly funny stories about Jesus and St. Peter. And the gist of them goes that uh, St. Peter and Jesus and everybody walking along, and a man comes running up and he says, I'm, I'm, I'm Please, please, I've got to see the Lord. I've got to see Jesus. And he says, Jesus says, what's the matter? And he says, well, it's my father. He's dying. He's dying. He's dying. He's dying. And Jesus says, well, okay. He says, um, do you have a bread oven in your house where you make bread? Yes. He said, well, put your father in the bread oven and cook him for a little while and see what that does. And the guy says, what? <laughs> so he goes, and that's the end of him. And St. Peter looks at Jesus and says, oh, that's right. Then they walk along, and pretty soon the guy comes running back, and he said, my father's wonderful. He's all, he's all said, thank you, Lord, falls on his knees. They go on a little further, and a man comes running down there, and, uh, and he said, I've got to see the Lord. I've got to see the Lord. And St. Peter says, well, he's busy right now. I speak for the Lord, so what's the matter? And I says, what's well, my mother? She's dying. My mother's going to die, and she's dying, and I can't live without my mother. What should I do? What should I do? He said, do you have a bread oven in your house? The guy says, yeah. I said, well, put her in there. I said, how long? <laughs> he comes up with it. So the guy looks away and he goes away. So pretty soon he comes back and he's got a meat cleaver in his hand. He's going to kill St. Peter. He says, my mother, she's burned to a crisp. My mother was burned to a crisp. What do you? And um, it's about that time Jesus comes up and says, what's the trouble? And <laughs> they tell him and he says, well, how long? You know, he's done, I've forgotten now what he does. How long? Well, there's, well, try this again. And the guy goes back and the mother then turns into a, a, a beautiful young woman who chases him and he comes around. And, you know, you get into stuff like that. These are folk tales. The people of the time could not read. Uh, there had to be something to explain why uh, uh, Mary and Joseph, why, why she was uh, an immaculate virgin and had a baby. Well, in, in these stories, uh, uh, Joseph is 80, 90, and she's 14. Um, the folk saw that there was precious little humor in Christianity, and that is, I think, its greatest defect, which has endured throughout the centuries and is one of the reasons it has so much trouble now. Other religions, Buddhism especially, has some room, not much, not much, but some. And the folk, in their wisdom, uh, made up all these stories. And then I began to get search folklore for these uh, folk tales about Jesus that I delighted in, that I'd never heard before. And I found a lot of them, and I made this book, Jesus Tales, and basically it's about St. Peter not understanding anything about <laughs> Jesus at all, but being a loving, devoted disciple, and so on. And uh, the book, uh, I worked on that book and I couldn't get it right. It was either too long and it was stuffy and ponderous or I'd cut it and the little tails would fall apart. My friend Reynolds Price gave me some very good, he says, it's fine, you just need interior cuts. And I did that and the book sort of got better and North Point Press published it and it did very well. A few people get very upset with the book, of course. Catholics love it because Jesus isn't some great thing against the wall, he's this guy. Uh, Born-again Christians can't stand it because their Jesus wouldn't do those things. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be funny. He wouldn't make jokes like this. He wouldn't play prank. He plays tricks. He plays jokes on people. It's, it's, it's rough folk humor. If, you know, and there is, I mean, I'm no theologian, nor do I wish to be, but there is a kind of a theological point to it. If they say God became man, and one of the great virtues of men, as far as I'm concerned, is a sense of humor, then God would have had a sense of humor. No? Well, there's not very damn much humor in the Christian religion, and not very much in the Bible. Dim little things every now and then, but not much. We get very nervous. When, uh... Everybody gets extremely nervous about it because 
wh what they think of humor is being, is being laughed at, you know, and the fact that the church could be laughed at. If you, wanted to, if you want to laugh at the church, well, you know, just the Lamb of God sitting on a throne by a river passing by, I mean, a lamb with a, with a th on a throne with a crown on it and a river going by. Uh, but when you think of the depth of feeling with which people sing that hymn, then it's not so foolish. Then it's, it's quite, it can be quite lovely. But it is funny. Uh, and as far as I know, I don't know of any other book about Jesus that's comic. So I'm very happy with that book. <laughs>